So how did that one costume impact the rest of the work for The Revenant? Well, I thought it was important for him to look like um, a guide, uh, somebody who hunted to keep the men alive, and uh, a leader. So Leo has power and stature just by his size. He's tall, he's got great big broad shoulders, but he also, I felt, shouldn't look like uh, quite the mercenary, as I made Tom Hardy's costume to uh, reflect. It, he, Tom Hardy was there not just for survival, but for monetary gain. He was in the wilderness for completely different reasons than um, Hugh Glass. So I wanted his coat to look a little bit more designed. I used fringe to wick the water. It was totally lined in pelts. His hat, his, at the beginning of the movie, he wore, wears uh, a piece called an eye patch to cover his scar because it was historical that when anyone was scalped that was a more seasoned fur trader, they were told to cover their scars so that the young, it wouldn't scare the young recruits to the fur trade off. So it gave him an almost kind of pirate, sinister look at the beginning. Later on, I added more and more badger. As he goes towards the fort, he's got a full on uh, badger down his back, uh, otter down his back, and badgers on the front. And I figured those two animals have totally figured out the wilderness and survival and uh, they're very wily and smart and um, there was a certain because uh, he's not a, a either a black or white character he's so there in the gray he's doing he's a victim of his own desire to survive and it goes awry and it's unintentional for some part and the other party's just mean but I wanted that survival of the fittest in his, incorporated into his coat and then Bridger was young Jim Bridger how it was reflected in his wardrobe he's in the movie a lot he was became having been trained by Hugh Glass about the wilderness he became the most famous mountain man of all times. There's a fort erected to him in Montana. Jim Bridger became the definitive mountain man in America. And probably he's the most famous. He's the one all the reenactment people emulate. So I made his coat buffalo to represent the Great Plains. And having been trained about the Great Plains by Hugh Glass. I lined it. It's, uh, it's, it's a real buffalo skin turned inside out because I thought that showed, you know, a certain smartness wearing the fur on the inside. Um, and that was, that was the theory behind him. And then um, Captain Henry, I tried to keep out of fur as much as I could and keep his military bearing intact. And fortunately, I kind of uh, pounced on the Museum of the Fur Trade, which this lovely woman, Gail Potter, who I've known for several years, runs and curates, and she helped me a lot. She had a lot of actual pieces under glass of Henry's clothing with drawings other men had done of Captain Henry. So she had his actual leggings, leather leggings there at the Museum of the Fur Trade in Chadron, Chadron Nebraska, and she let me copy them. And they're under glass. They're from 1823.